if there was one factor that could define the things that I like, my taste, as it were, it would be this. I operate in extremes. Very brief side note, because I just saw myself in the reflection. You know how politicians do this, instead of pointing? I've started doing this instead of pointing, because pointing is aggressive, but I want to point, so I do this, but I don't like a politician. This is the worst thing possible, so I start doing this instead. This is, and this just, I, this isn't good either. That, so what do I do? I have, to, the, I have to do the Italian one. This is the perfect, but it only works if you're Italian. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. Let's get back to this. <laughs> I operate in extremes. Now I'm going to be so self-conscious of my hand gestures this whole time. Oh no. I op I'm going to try and not look at the screen. I operate in extremes, right? When it comes to anything, I will take the furthest you can go with that concept. Because I don't want to see someone sort of like barely exploring something. I don't want to see someone like, you know, just flirting with an idea. I want to see the idea fleshed out in its most extreme and full form, right? And this can be seen in, like, everything, from music, to anime, to movies, to books, every, everything I, all art I consume, is found at the boundaries and the extremes. Not for any reason of, you know, pretentiousness, or even really, like, you know, artsiness, or, or message, or anything like that. It's more about just, why would you do anything else? For example, Almost all anime these days, modern anime, has some element of moe. It's infected the entire culture. Uh, even, you know, shonens, stuff that comes out in Shonen Jump, like Food Wars, for example. There are always now, and there always have been to some extent, you know, going back to, like, the girls in, like, you know, older shonens, like Yu Yu Hakusho, or even Dragon Ball to some extent, being cute girls in shonen, this has been a thing, but they were more like sexy girls or hot girls. Now we got cute moe girls in shonen, like the girl from Food Wars, uh, who she's like a moe character in the middle of a shonen. Like, there's many popular anime, you know, even some of the most popular anime, like Sword Art Online or ReZero or Death Note or, uh, you know, all of these shows. ReZero is a great example. So ReZero has, you know, Rem the, and Emilia to some extent. The classic sort of Moe archetype. Like, the Rem is inarguably a Moe girl. This is, it's like, you can't, she's there to be Moe. That's her purpose in the story, is as a element of Moe. So I see that, and I think, why are you doing 20 things badly? Follow the Unix philosophy. Do one thing as well as you possibly can. I don't want to see ReZero, which is doing like, it's trying to do Moe, it's trying to do serious drama, it's trying to do comedy, it's trying to do isekai, it's trying to do uh, horror, it's trying to do all these things, and all of them badly. I don't want to see that. I want to see all of those individual things done to their fullest extent. I don't want to see, you know, I have tolerance for these things. I have you know, I can put up with an extreme focused version on one spe specific thing. In fact, I only can put up with that, and anything else feels bad. Moe is a good example. Compare the Moe in a show to ReZero, I don't watch shows like ReZero. I don't watch whatever seasonal shit everyone's watching. JJK, I think, is the current big anime. I don't watch that shit. I have no idea what the fuck it's about. I only know about it because Young Sai's watching it, and he said, Hey, have you watched Jujutsu Kaisen? And I said, uh, no, I don't watch seasonal shit. And he said, oh, it's really good. And I, I thought, I didn't say it out loud, but I thought to myself, get, like better things. Fuck you, like better things. And see, I've even started doing the Italian thing now. Come on, forget about it. <laughs> this is terrible. This is terrible. Anyway. So, I don't want to see ReZero. Right? I don't want to see a show which is doing a million things poorly. The horror in ReZero is just terrible. There's no good horror anime. I'm sorry, it doesn't exist. If you can prove me wrong, prove me wrong. But I've seen some of the ones that people say are good and they're all bad. Uh, like, uh, Mononoke, right? That's supposed to be a really good one. Nah, eh, not that good. I mean, Junji Ito isn't an anime, that's a manga. That obviously the best horror. Eh, sorry, it's tangent. Keep focused, keep on the straight and narrow, no thank you. Keep, keep your ideas succinct and to the point. So, 
I don't want to see a show like ReZero, which has, you know, some Moe characters and elements of Moe, elements of Slice of Life. I want to see, you know, I don't watch those shows. Instead, I watch Gotcha Yusa. Instead, I watch Sketchbook Full Colors. Instead, I watch, you know, Hidamari Sketch. These shows which have nothing to them except Moe. Gotcha Yusa is probably the most extreme that's been made so far that I can think of. Maybe Slow Start is also in the same sort of camp where there is literally nothing to it. Like, the show only exists to show the face of a, a cute kawaii moe anime girl. The, the, it, it, the entire show is a vehicle for the moments where that happens and everything else is to serve that, right? Like, Gotcha Yusa, for example. I love Gotcha Yusa, right? Gotcha Yusa, and I'm talking about this because I recently finished the third season, so it's kind of on my mind. Gotcha Yusa is probably the most diabetes show that I've found so far. I've, you know, I've looked around. There are other shows that are like have a similar sort of atmosphere, but those are more Iyashi K, whereas Gotcha Yusa is still fast paced and not Iyashi K, but also the most diabetes moe cute girls doing cute things show as far as I have found so far. If you know any more, please tell me because I love them. Um, so Gotcha Yusa is ostensibly a comedy. It's ostensibly a slice of life comedy about these girls running a coffee shop. That's like what it almost pretends to be. It has a gag manga format. It like as a pace pacing of a gag manga. It was originally a gag manga in Manga Time Kirara Carrot? One of the Manga Time Kirara magazines. Um but it's not funny. <laughs> it's, it's, you get like one joke every, maybe one joke an episode or one joke every two episodes that actually lands. That is not acceptable for a comedy. We wouldn't accept that if the show was actually supposed to be a comedy. And there are jokes, like it's not like, you know, it's not like a, I don't know, a, a show where, where, where it's like it's doing other things and then sometimes a joke happens, right, to, to leaven the attitude. It's not like that. The entire show is a young comma format. Beat, 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 punchline. Beat, 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 punchline. Beat, beat, punchline reaction. Beat, 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 punchline. Like, the entire show follows that natural rhythm, which is one of the things I really like about Slice of Life anime, is that they follow this rhythm and it's, it's just a really nice way to keep the audience interested. I think it's a great way. It's a great rhythm that maybe other things other than slice of life anime should adopt, but anyway, they're, like the jokes aren't funny. <laughs> the show, I can't ex emphasize this enough. It is like the show is constantly beat 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 joke beat 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 joke, and none of the jokes are funny. One one in every like fifty jokes actually makes me, you know, laugh or anything. Most of them are just really really bland, boring. Like to call me, Boke to call me lying. Like you know, they're they're not that it's like beat beat Coco says something silly and then zoom in on fucking Chio face when she goes da, ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, you know and that's the whole show there's like <laughs> to any normal person who doesn't understand the intricacies of Moe it's a terrible fucking comedy it's just a really bad comedy but that's because the comedy doesn't exist to be funny the comedy exists as a vehicle for Moe because the show is only existing to have Moe happen. That is the only reason it exists, because it's far on the extremes of Moe. You know, it's not interested in even really caring about being a comedy. It's just a comedy because that's the best format we have to have as many moments crammed in of a character doing something cute as possible. Because it's not going to be a fucking drama, is it? And some of them try this. I'm looking at you, Koisuru Asteroid. I'm looking at you, uh, uh, something else, I forgot, Konohana Kitan, Konohana Kitan, I'm looking at you. Some of them try and be not comedies, some of them try and be dramas, and they suck, right? The only two places you can have moe are Iyashike or comedy, and, you know, normally the Iyashikes are comedies, so comedy is the only vehicle you can use to have moe happen as much as possible. And that's all that the show cares about, is having Moe happen as much as possible. It's right on the extremes, and I'm not interested in anything less than that. Anything less than that is a fucking half measure, because look how far you can take it. Look how far you can take it. You can take it this far, and explore it this much, and focus in on it this well. Why would you do anything else? It boggles the mind. Same thing, 
let's go back to ReZero. ReZero is also a bit of a overcomplicated, tuny light novel plot. I'm not interested in it because it's only a bit of that. The only overcomplicated, tuny light novel plot show I like, really, I, I, I'm iffy on Index Accelerator series. You know, some of the arts, it's, it's okay. It, it has its ups and downs. It's not that good, but when it's good, it's fine. When it's bad, it's bad. The only one I really like, and I really, really like it, is the most overcomplicated, the most tuny show ever made, Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere. And that's one of my favorite fucking shows. Why? Because it only does that. It doesn't care about doing anything else. It doesn't fucking give a shit. It only cares about being as ridiculously overcomplicated as possible, as tuny as possible, as like world building insanity as possible. Just throw ideas at you constantly. Here's, here's a character. 50 characters are introduced in the first episode. I have a piece of paper over here. Here, here. Here's my piece of paper. This is the characters. This is a list of the characters introduced in the first chapter. This is a list of the characters introduced in the first chapter of the light novel, right? It's only interested in giving you as much information as possible at all times, because that's all it cares about, because it follows the Unix philosophy, right? It only is trying to be one thing, which is a really overcomplicated light novel world where everything is happening all the time, and it's up to you to decipher it or know her fucking handholding, right? This isn't ReZero, this is Horizon. This isn't even, you know, Fate or, um, fucking, uh, the other one. I'm trying to remember what it's called. The thing that's linked to Fate that are movies. Kirk, 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 It's right on the tip of my tongue. Okay, whatever. I'll remember it in a second. Anyway, it's not any of those. It's Horizon. It's not fucking Index. It's not Accelerator. There is no, like, oh, well, let's... Let's make sure that we have something to appeal to a crowd that might like uh, this, and let's make sure we have something to appeal to a crowd that might. No, fuck you. We appeal to the one. We do the one thing we're doing, and we do it as well as we can, and we do it as often and as much as we can, and we cram as much of it in there as we can because that's the one thing we're doing. I'm not gonna do other shit because that's not what we're here to do. We're here to do the one thing we're doing, and the one thing we're doing is a really overcomplicated light novel plot, right? Or well, the one thing we're doing is Molly. That's all we're doing. If you want to watch something that doesn't have this, you, then watch something else. You know, that's the point. That's what anime is all about. It's niches of niches of niches of niches. That's what the fuck anime is all about. That's what I'm all about. That's what I'm all about as a human being. Is niches of niches of niches of niches. Because it feels better. Why? Because it feels better when you feel like a show is, mar is targeted directly towards you. It feels better when you know something appeals not just like half assedly to the things you like, but directly to the things you like, and only the things you like. I wish everything was like this. Music. I always go to the most extremes. I'm not going to listen to, like, Dimu Borgir, or whatever the fuck, that I think I'm pronouncing that right, for my black metal. I'm going to listen to Paysage Diver. I'm going to listen to Gris. I'm going to listen to, you know, the most lo-fi, the most, like, d d depressing, or, um, you know, whatever the fuck, Paysage Diver, you heard that fucking first album, or EP, or demo mixtape, I don't know what it is. It literally sounds like he's drumming on fucking paint cans. I'm pretty sure they are drumming on paint cans. <laughs> I don't, like, I'm pretty damn sure. It sounds like it was recorded. Like, I don't even know how you find a microphone that bad. I literally don't understand. That's what I'm all about. I don't want to hear your shitty imitation black metal. I want to hear the most black metal things possible. Right? Same thing with all of this shit. Same thing with all of this shit. I don't want to hear, you know, the newest 100 Gex track, because they're just, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's not all the way. <laughs> it's not all the way. It's only halfway there. I, I can't really describe, the, I don't have the language tools to really describe exactly what I mean with regards to music. It's much easier with a narrative medium to explain it, because music is a, a lot more, like, intuition-based, I suppose. Or at least the way I experience it. And, you know, some things that I, which I find more extreme, other people might not find as extreme. So whereas I find, you know, uh, as I said, like Paysage Diver to be uh, some of the most extreme black metal, someone else might say, uh, well, that's not that extreme because they don't play that fast and it's not that loud and, you know, etc. A more extreme band would be like a black and death metal thing because they play faster and louder and you can hear the drums clearly so it sounds more aggressive. Like someone else might disagree with me on what makes something more extreme. That's a different thing. Know what I'm talking about. 
uh, so like extremity is also subjective when I say I like the extremes of things it's always going to be what I perceive to be the extremes of things because maybe some other people like you know think that uh, I don't know whatever that's some other people might think something different the point being I like extremes of things I, d I don't like fucking half assed half measure bullshit um, we can continue down this road. We can talk about anything else. Movies. I don't want like, like I, I don't want a movie that has driving in it. I want Speed Racer. You know. <laughs> I don't want a movie that has some metaphor in it. I want Snecticky New York or Holy Mountain or something. I. Uh, we can we can continue down this path with literally anything. I don't want an operating system that is sort of like Ubuntu Linux Mint trying to fucking do a bunch of shit to make it appeal to as wide an audience as possible. I want an operating system that is designed to do only what I want it to do and nothing more. I don't want a computer that is designed to, you know, benefit Apple. I want a computer that is designed to benefit me and me alone. ThinkPad. That's what that section was about, was the ThinkPad, because that wasn't very clear. Um, and it can, can just continue in every single direction. Everything I like can always be defined as I want something that does one thing and one thing well. I don't ha you know, I don't have a rich f fucking sparkly jewellery watch full of diamonds and shit, because that's not doing one thing well. That's doing two things. It's doing jewellery and time telling. I don't want those. I only want one that tells the time. And that's why, if we go over here, I'm not wearing it right now, but that's why I have my Casio F91W, because all it does is tell the fucking, I mean, it also has a stopwatch, but... Like, that's kind of useful, I guess. I mean, I don't really need a stopwatch, but it has a stopwatch and a backlight. The backlight is just to serve the fact that it can tell time better, because sometimes you're in a dark place, and, um, you know, if you're in a dark place and you can't tell the time, then it's not doing its job. So the backlight serves the single purpose. I'm, I, will, I will die on this hill. Backlights aren't bloat in watches. <laughs> Maybe they could have used glow-in-the-dark hands, but fuck it. Or not hands, it's a digital watch. Backlight's probably the best solution. That's all I'm trying to say. I don't want to watch a YouTube video of a guy, you know, going to a country, but it's also like, a, oh, it's a travel blog, but then at the same time, it's like a daily vlog where it's sort of like the appeal is to hang out with the person, but it's also like a, you know, tourist advert where it's like, oh, here are the appeals of this country, but it's also like, uh, I don't know, a pickup artistry video, like, <laughs> um, bored and bankrupt, or, I don't know, you know, these sorts of things. I don't want to watch all of that. I want to watch just a guy struggling to get across a fucking country. Dummies day out. That's all I want to fucking watch. I don't want to watch, um, someone who makes video- Oh, I'm Gigguk. I talk about every anime that's popular, and I talk about it in the way that will appeal to the most amount of people possible, and I will only cover the stuff that's popular and, and you know, because what's the point in covering something that no one fucking cares about in 2021? Fuck you, because you're over here, because I'm gesturing over here, because I positioned myself in this third of the frame so that it would look cool. So I'm gesturing over here because this is where Gigguk lives, in my in my fucking closet. How, how are you doing in there, Gigguk? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't want to fuck you, Gigguk. Fuck you. Like better things. No, no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't want to watch fucking Gigguk in my closet. I want to watch fucking Princess Thunderphonics, who makes videos about pretty much fucking Ojimajo Doremi only. Who cares about Ojimajo Doremi? I haven't even fucking seen Ojimajo Doremi. I haven't even seen it. No one fucking cares about it in the world, like in the wider world, outside of the people who already care about it. No one gives a shit. Young Sai is like my only fucking, um, like, marker, like, my, my relative marker of how I can tell what a, a somewhat regular person is into with regards to anime. He's, he's like my closest connection to what are the things that people like. He does not give a- he could not give a fuck about Ojimajo Doemi, obviously, because he's like a relatively normal person who likes, you know, traditionally good things. Because Ojimajo Doemi is also just doing one thing, it's just doing- here's a group of magical girls who are friends with each other, that's all it cares about doing. Again, I haven't seen it, I probably should. One day I will, it's very long. Uh, please forgive me. But, yeah. So Plunder make a video channel that only about doing that. See, it's good. It's that's the way Plunder is the best anime channel. But and the second best anime channel is KYDB.
because he makes videos that are just about one. Here's every anime that has cockroach girls in it. Fuck you. It's an hour long. It's just everything that has cockroach girls in it. Why? This isn't popular. None of these shows are well known. Fuck you. Here's a two hour long video about the impact uh, of Kimono Friends 2 in Japan. Why? Fuck you. <laughs> I love him. He's great. I love those fucking videos. Um, anyway, it seems like I've woken someone up with my shouting. Uh, I guess it's 9am. I'm allowed to fucking shout. Fuck you. I like things on the extremes. I like uh, extreme music. But extreme music doesn't have to be harsh music. This is the thing. Extremity doesn't mean harsh, right? In the same way, if I wanted to have a pop song, I'd want it to be the most poppy of pop songs. In the same way, if I had wanted to have, you know, something uh, trashy to watch, like like a action movie or something, I want something that is the most action movie action movie, like, like Crank 2 or something like that, or, or Hard Boiled. You know, these sorts of things. I don't... That's the sort of action movie I like. Uh, do you understand? It's not just about doing something that isn't popular. It's about doing something that is specific well and not vague. Because vagaries just breed inconsistencies and they breed laziness. Because everything's vague already, so no one's going to notice when you're lazy with it. You know, I want something that is a specific sound or a specific thing. Like, my albums, my two most recent albums, which are really the ones that are... Okay, my two most recent... No, thank you albums, which are really the best ones. Um, to the Fairest and Ensign of Utility. To the Fairest is the same sounds, the same noises for a whole album. Ensign of Utility is the same noises for a whole album. It's not an album where every song sounds different from the previous one. There is one sound I want to explore in those albums. In, in To the Fairest, I, I want to explore the one sound that is this weird pitched up auto-tuned vocals, pitched up uh, bass, really loud, noisy drums, um, and very, like, poppy anime-type melodies juxtaposed with noisy, distorted bass and drums and guitars to create an interesting effect where you are positioned to sort of reimagine poppy melodies as something that could be, um, you know, somewhat harsh, manic, and uh, abrasive to sort of separate it from the pre-linked expectations, expectations where you assume that if something has, if something is going to be distorted, it is going to forego melody and um, these sorts of things, and, and sort of like poppy high, uh, melodies, catchy melodies are going to, you know, be against distorted harshness. It, it's trying to do both of those combined into one sound, very specifically with, you know, my bass guitar and my particular way I have my drums set up and stuff like that, and it just does that sound for an album. Then Encyc of Utility. What if we took Crescendo Core, like post-rock stuff, like uh, Godspeed You Black Emperor, and the bit where the crescendo peaks is really fucking loud, because, and so instead of it being like a crescendo into violins and an orchestra and stuff like that, it's a crescendo into, uh, you know, uh, I am a lake of burning orchids, somewhere in my veins, the goslings, loudness. What if it, what if it, what if it, when it gets loud, it gets fucking loud? And that's the whole album. Every song is quiet part, crescendo, loud, really loud, distorted part, quiet part, crescendo, really loud. Every single song is the same on that album, except maybe one of them, which is just like a metal song. But pretty much every song is the same on that album. Pretty much every song on uh, To The Fairest is the same. Every song on the albums I'm working on right now are the same. I have two ideas that I want to explore. I have one idea which is like, what if I take the sounds of these artists and fuse them together? You know, here's like three artists that I really like, that I feel like that I can draw a parallel between their sounds, and there is no band that has made all of these into one, so what if I take this aspect from this artist, this aspect from this artist, and this aspect from this artist, and combine them with my own sensibilities into this one particular sound? I'm even using the same, like, ch plug-in chain for my, like, amp simulation and stuff in each album and doing that really well as well as I can for an album. And then my other album is what if I take this genre and remove this element and replace it with an element from a different genre, I'm trying to be purposely vague to not give spoilers to the plots of my albums, the sonic plot of my album, the sonic narrative of my albums. What if I take this genre, which I'm already experienced in and I already like, 
but I take away an element that you might think is central to the genre and replace it with an element from a different genre, which is, I think is related, but no one else seems to, well, some people seem to have noticed, but like, I think there's this other genre which has something related to this genre. So what if I sort of like swap them out for each other? What if I swap them out for each other and do a little bait and switch? Then you have this new sound, which doesn't sound like anything before, but it's like very specific sound because it takes one element from this genre and one element from this genre and combines them and now you have this new sound that's neither. I just got that video you just watched, that clip you just watched into my editing bay. Oops, just tripped over a cable. Just got that video into my editing bay, my editing suite, which is a computer and nothing else. Um, now, while recording that video, uh, I was interrupted and had to stop recording. And I tried to start recording again and finish my train of thought, but by then I'd completely forgotten what the point of what I was saying was, and I went on a long tangent about something that was basically unrelated and it wasn't that interesting. And uh, yeah, so instead, I'm going to come in here with an addendum um, to sort of explain a little additional thing that I didn't cover in that video. I know that the cutoff is sudden, but I was interrupted. What can you do? My little addendum is. Operating in extremes is not the same thing as sort of being a hipster and caring about, uh, you know, specifically about how popular something is. Just because something is in the extremes doesn't actually mean it's not popular. Just because something is an idea explored fully, in fact, some of these are very, very popular. My favourite example for something that is like this, but also extremely popular, is the band Nirvana. I love Nirvana, huge fan of Nirvana, also one of the biggest bands of all time. For most popular bands of all time, when they were around, they were the most popular band around. When, you know, even to this day you see people who still like Nirvana, you know, you can't argue that Nirvana is not an incredibly popular band. You're not getting any hipster points by saying you like Nirvana. I still like Nirvana. Why? Because they, take, they took their sound to its complete logical conclusion. They explored it fully. Now, they maybe could have explored it more fully had their time not been, unfortunately, cut short by the death of Kurt Cobain. But in all of their albums, none of those albums are half assed or um, pruned down to appeal to a, a mass audience. They just happened across a sound that naturally appealed to a mass audience. It didn't, it does, none of those albums feel like oh, we could do something crazy here, and I want to, but that will eat into sales, or something like that. No. They they have fucking Endless Nameless is a song that they made. In Utero, as a whole album, is, like, pretty out there for a mainstream album. It's about as out there for a mainstream album as you get. Um, and yet it sold massively well, because it's a, just a fucking great album, and no one can debate it. Right? This is the thing. Just because something takes itself to its conclusion doesn't mean that it automatically alienates most of its audience. It's just that a lot of times they do tend to do this, because not everyone is as talented as the members of Nirvana. Um, you know, and not everyone stumbles across an idea that is as that happens to be as mass appealing and executes that idea as well as Nirvana can do it, because they're, you know, a sort of unique group of talented individuals. This tends to be how it is, so you could take the idea of Nirvana sound and take it to its logical conclusion, it will still be something that most people can understand and enjoy. Whereas if you take an idea of, as I mentioned in my videos, or in my previous clip, I guess, slice of life anime, and you take that to its logical conclusion, that doesn't create a product that is widely appealing. That creates a product that isn't, has a niche appeal. These things just happen differently for, for different uh, ideas, the, the, the variance in ideas, because extremity and conclusions and all of these things are not dependent on any particular individual element of where you start. You can do it with anything. You could do it with literally anything. You could do it with a job. You could do it with like a a craft, you know. It's like it's the same it's the same principle behind people who choose to master their craft. It's the exact same principle as someone who decides to become a master carpenter or, you know, study computing or become a great mathematician or, you know, any of these things. Someone who decides to, you know, learn to be, be a bricklayer and take pride in their work. It's the same thing. If, a, you know, my dad always used to say, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. I, I be, maybe that's just because it's a meme that was implanted in me from my father when I was growing up, but I feel like that's a pretty good attitude to have in life. And I apply that to art. I apply that to the things I like. If, you ha if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. If you have an artistic idea, 
it's worth doing that idea a full service by taking it to its logical conclusion and fully exploring it and not, you know, cutting out all of the stuff that you think is going to, you know, um, you know, weaken the product or in the eyes of the masses or, and it's not just about the eyes of the masses because sometimes people do this even when they're not expecting broad appeal. It's just people try and do things for, that they, people try and do too many things at once or people try and do, um, they're not uh, thinking properly to, in a way where they explore an idea fully, they just don't necessarily understand the full ramifications of the idea that they've had, or, uh, you know, there are many, many reasons why an idea wouldn't fully come to fruition in its final concluded state. Uh, I'm just not very interested in those ideas. An idea is much more interesting when it does happen in its final concluded state. And there's, there's of course, other factors, and this is something else that I wanted to point out. I'm gesturing with my water bottle now. There's something else I wanted to point out, which is um, the final concluded state or fully explored idea doesn't have to be like specific, like too specific. It's not like there's only one way to do these things. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to put this into words. So it can it can sort of transform even in the middle of it. So like. Take Evangelion, for example. Everyone knows the story about Evangelion. There was an episode plan that was too similar to the sarin gas attacks in the Tokyo subway. They had to, like, completely cut what they had almost finished, an episode and a half, and then they were in a... they were behind schedule for the rest of production, and that led to a decision to make the last two episodes very minimal and, uh, you know, more about dialogue because that could be recorded much faster than recording a bunch of animation and very simplistic animation and so on. Now, I, for one, think that improved the show, and in fact, it made it gave the show something unique to stand out among uh, the crowd, because no other anime finishes that way, even though, of course, Ava was already super popular before the final two episodes uh, aired. It was already the biggest show on TV, or the biggest anime on TV, at least. Um, it would already revolutionise the genre with, you know, high quality... Before the last two episodes, it had already revolutionised the the genre of high quality original TV anime, and then the last two episodes sort of elevate it in my mind into something completely unique. But that was caused by something going wrong, right? Like who knows what last two episodes we would have gotten had the original schedule gone to plan? Maybe it would have been great. Maybe it would have been terrible. Doesn't matter. What matters is the idea is still taken to its logical conclusion. It doesn't matter how it gets there, as long as the new idea which has been forced to happen due to external circumstances, is still followed through fully. They didn't fucking pussy around. They didn't do what a modern show would do if they had budget cuts, which is, you know, just cheaply try and animate the same thing. Anno, being a smart guy, thought, we're clearly not going to be able to do this plotline service. We'll rewrite it in a way that we can make it make sense with our limited time and resources. And they did. Again, he didn't say, let's rewrite it a little bit, no, let's just make it a little bit less animation heavy, and that way we can just sort of botch our way around. No, he didn't do that. He completely rewrote it, redesigned the fucking story to work within their limitations. Everyone has to work within the limitations. Watch Azoken. Um, everyone has to work with whatever art you're making is going to be have some sort of limitations, budgetary, time constraints. There's a million different, you're in, even your own technical skill. Every art is going to have to have compromises. That's a different thing. It's whether you... You know, it's about how you find a way to overcome those compromises. That's part of, that's just part of the process of making art. Part of being a good director, on set, nothing is going to go perfectly. Everything is going to have little problems. That is the key part of being a director, is how you overcome those problems. And that is, to me, why Arno was such a great director. Because he was faced with a huge fucking problem in the middle of his, like, greatest, most important work. Or, in my opinion, at least. A huge fucking problem. I mean, one and a half episodes having to be scrapped, being behind and, you know, out of time, out of money for, like, so... Like, you're fucked, basically. That, like, anyone else, you're fucked if that happens. But Arno, being a great director, understood how to overcome the problems and took the new ideas that he had, which were forced by limitations, because creativity comes from limitations, in a sense, creatively found a way to come up with new ideas and didn't half ass it. He didn't say, oh, let's, like make it a little less animation heavy and a little more about, you know, philosophical dialogue. He said, let's make it all about philosophical dialogue and write some really fucking good philosophical dialogue. Even though he wrote it in like a day. I don't know if he wrote it, whoever wrote it. They wrote, they made those episodes very quickly, the last two episodes. What I'm saying is, it doesn't matter, you know, these things don't matter. These things aren't what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, you know, made it to the, even 
to the highest quality. Like, like you know, it's about working to your strengths, and it's about doing something properly, even when you face problems in do in making something or doing something. You you don't half ass it. You don't go halfway and think, well, I've thought about that enough now. You take it to its logical conclusion until you're like, well, I have nothing else to say on this subject. Or if you're Arno, you say, uh, well, I still have more to say. Look, I've said as much as I could here, but wait a couple, wait a little while until I make uh, five movies about it, and then you'll see. Oh, and also all of my other shows are about the same thing, and everything I've ever written and made in my life is really about the same thing. Because no one seems to... I keep trying to tell you, and no one's understanding it, so I just have to keep telling you over and over again. That's what Arno's like, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's the same sort of thing. He didn't fucking, like, b b pussy out. He didn't pussy out and half ass a job and do a job shitly because they had fucking trouble. And that is why it still counts as doing something fully. Because even though it wasn't the original vision, or maybe it was, I don't know. Maybe he always planned for the last two episodes. Maybe he, maybe he always planned to have to scrap an episode and a half in the middle of production. You never know. You never know. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it, though. Um, but uh, th the point being, ideas can change. Ideas are fluid. They change as you're making things. Change as you're making them. You know, a million times I started to make a song, recorded like most of a song, thought it was kind of shit, but liked one element. Oh, this song, eh, it's not really doing anything for me, but that guitar line in the middle, what if I cut that up and loop it and use that as the basis for a new song? Delete everything, except the guitar line, cut it up and loop it. Oh, now that's inspired me to make a much better song than the one I was originally working on. Ideas are fluid, that's just how creativity works. So, the point is, don't stop halfway to the destination. Try and reach your destination. The The ultimate thing is, like, there is no perfect art, right? But there's no point in um, making an artwork that tries to do 60 things imperfectly when you could make an artwork that tries to do one thing as perfectly as possible. It will never attain perfection, but the imperfections that you do have are going to add to it. They're going to be part of the artisticness of it. Like, art is imperfection, uh, naturally. And so when you take something to its logical conclusion, and when I see something that's been taken to its logical conclusion, that's been explored as fully as possible within the circumstances, I feel connected because the failures and the imperfections that are, that are included in that art tell me something artistic, tell me something notable, rather than the failures being, you know, oh, they just couldn't fucking be bothered to do this, or, oh, he's the, the, the guy who wrote this just wasn't clever enough to think of that, that plot hole, or they didn't you know, whatever. It's not like, oh, well, they didn't have time to do it. Yeah, they didn't have time to make the last two episodes of Ava, so they made something better instead. Like, that's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. That is what everything is all about. That is the shit that I love. That is what speaks to me as a person. So don't, you know, all I'm trying to say is that old saying that my dad used to tell me. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. Is what I, I don't want to see jobs that weren't done properly. I want to see a job that was done properly. That's why I like handshakers. That's why I like shit like handshakers or Portrait de la Petite Cosette, right? Because they have this vision and they, they're like, fuck everyone else. I have this thing that I want to do, right? I, want, I have this fucking insane visual style that I, that I want to do. I don't give a fuck what everything else is, right? I don't give a fuck what you say. I don't give a fuck if it alienates the audience, whatever. I want to explore this visual style and I will not fucking dumb it down. I will, like, fuck you. I, I want to explore this visual style. I'm not going to, like, oh, well, maybe we could incorporate elements of that <clears throat> into a more standard style. Fuck you. I have this visual style. I'm going to do to take it all the way. That's what I like. Take it all the way. 